today we're looking at the index formula in Google Sheets. So index is a way to reference a cell within a data set, for example, on a table like this or within the entire tab as a whole. So I've numbered the columns here and I've numbered the rows to make this easier. And so the way the index formula works, let's go ahead and open this and show Google's little helper. So it tells you there's three parts. There's the reference. And so that's the table of data where you want to look up a particular value. Then you can specify the row number and the column number. So let's go ahead and select our data set. And so you notice I'm only selecting the data. I'm not selecting the headers and such like that because of the way the numbering works. So let me go ahead and just start with one and one for each one. And you can see the formula reflected there. So this is returning 01. And so if you notice in this data set, I just to make it easy, I put O across the board for Olivia, and then one, two, three, and so forth to correspond to the months, just so it's easy to track as we go along. So if we want to go to September, we can change our column to nine, and then maybe we want to go down to Liam, which is three. Now we have L9, which is September, and Liam right here. So this number corresponds to the top left of our data set. So you notice we're starting at D7. So the three and the nine all start from here. So if you notice, I have one marked here and one marked here. So as you're calculating these numbers for your rows and columns, just keep in mind it starts from the top left of the data range that you specify in the formula. All right, so now we've covered the very basics of index. Let's go ahead and go through couple different use cases so you can get a better idea of how you can use, it, use this in your data set. So here we have something similar. We again have the sales person and their totals. And so we have a drop down here for them. And then we want to figure out what their total sales were based on the name. So first off, let's start with the basics index and let's just pull this in manually. So let's grab the totals and then Olivia is row one. And so we, we can specify column one as well, or we can leave it blank either way. We'll just go ahead and specify it so you can see that there. But we want to be able to, to specify it based on this. So we're going to use a formula called match. So let's go ahead and just pull in. Let's go ahead and pull in Liam. And so let's do a match formula. And so a match formula, you use a key, which is going to be Liam, comma. We want to search in a range. So this is the range we want to search in because Liam is right there. And then zero for exact match. So if we do this, we can see we return row three, which will result here. So if instead is one, we can literally reference the cell, we can see that we come up with 12399, which is the result for Liam. If we change this to Emma, you can see now it returns two and 1246. So let's go ahead and jump down to the bottom, James, and we have row six and 12081. So this is all great and dandy, but you don't want to use multiple cells to return this. So we can actually use this match formula. I'm going to copy this. And instead of referencing the result for that match, I'm actually just going to use that match directly in the formula. So now we can actually delete this. And you can see that this is still working. So what we've used is a combo of index and a match. So this match is returning the row number we want to return. So now that you see how that works, let's go ahead to our next one. And we're going to actually use a match for our column index as well. So I already have the formulas populated here for you. So you can see, so we started with the very similar. So first off, our match one, which would be for our row. Here's our match. So we're matching James from C4. And we're matching James and our salesperson column right here. And that returns six. So if we change this to Emma, you see it changes to two. Now for our column match, now I'm matching the month. And you can see here, instead of matching a column, I'm actually matching a row D8 to 08. And again, exact match using that zero at the end. So then we return two. Now this one, I have it set up so far the same way as we had before where I'm just referencing the result of the match formulas. But let's go ahead and put it together. So we have our match for the salesperson. 
So let me go ahead and just delete this out here. To make sure you can see what's going on here. So here's our range, result range that we want to look in. First off, we want to return the row, which is going to be our salesperson. I'm just going to go ahead and type this out. So salesperson, we're going to select the salesperson column there and zero. And now we want to match our month. So we're going to do another match formula. I'm going to select the month selector. And then I'm going to select where I have my months here, zero, and close that out. And so now you can see that we have this filled in. I'll go ahead and just make this smaller. So you can see that formula there. So we have our index here, and then we're populating our row from this first match formula, and then our column from the second. And so now if I select April, which is our super wide formula now, or super wide column now, you can see it returns 448, which is the result for Emma in April. All right. Now let's look at some other ways we can use the index formula. So let's say we want to find the last result in a table. So maybe you have some weekly data, you're filling numbers in each week, and you want to be able to know at a glance without scrolling down, because perhaps this goes down for 52 weeks and you're somewhere down week 40, but you don't have to scroll down and see what it is. So you can put a little formula at the top and to show your most recent week and most recent sales. So what we're doing here is we're generating our row number based on this count a formula. So this count a formula counts how many values are in the data set. So we're counting G4 down to the G19, and it is returning, if you look over here, 12. And so if we look at this, highlight this, it's showing 12. So it's going to return row 12 out of this data set, which returns with this 13. So this one, I'm actually doing this reference over here in F because I want to return the actual week. And then if I go down to the next one, you can see both of these are the same. It's both coming from G. And so this is actually going to return the final amount, which is 13813. So this is an easy way. And if you start thinking or realizing that you can generate these numbers any way you need to, then it helps you realize the flexibility of using the index formula as you can stack multiple formulas inside to calculate the numbers that you need. And so you can do offsets and stuff like that. But let's go ahead and jump to our next one, which is going to be similar to our last row, except for what we have here is we don't want the last one as you can see that we have a bunch of different dates, but they're not actually in order. And so we actually want the most recent date. And so you can see here, we have this count a formula, but it's returning 12. And so we're getting just the bottom one here, which is not what we want. We want the biggest one. And so what we're going to do here is actually a combo of a couple different formulas. So how will we determine Let's go ahead and back out of this. How would we determine which is the biggest or the most recent date? And so the way dates work is they're all assigned a numeric value. And so I'm actually going to just show you real quick here. Let me copy this. This over here. And you can see now they're actually all assigned a numeric value. And so the bigger the date, so to speak, the bigger the number. Most recent date is going to have the biggest number. And so we can use that to our advantage here. So first off, I'm just going to show you max. And you can see now that max returns our most recent date. And so you've been th looking at the matches that we've been doing. You might be getting ahead of me and realizing we can use a combo of index. And actually, we want to return the date. And then we can use a match. Now, what we need to do is get the biggest date. So we're actually going to use max inside the match. And so if you just saw what we came up with the max was 928. And so now we want to actually match that same one in this data set. Zero. And there we go. And so it may seem to be a long-winded way to get the same result as just putting max. But now we can copy this formula, paste it down here. And now we actually want the amount. So I'm just going to change my column from F to G. Hit enter. And now you can see that we're actually returning that 9362 here. Now what happens if, let's go ahead and change, or uh, let's just actually add another one, another one here, 929. 
let's say 25,000. And you see now it automatically updated. It's returning the biggest and most recent number. All right, let's go ahead and go to our next one. So you can actually use the index formula to return multiple results using a array formula, which turns a single cell into multiple. So I have these yellow ones highlighted. This is where the formulas are, and the green is what's getting automatically populated. Can you notice there's actually not a formula here, it's just a number. Now, the way we can tell is I'm gonna put this single quote in front of the formula, or it just turns it into text, makes it doesn't render, and you can see all these go blank. Now if I go back, delete this, so the formula populates again. And so all we're doing here is wrapping our index formula inside this array formula. So I can do index and grab my data set. And then I want to return third column and I can close it. Now, one thing you'll notice is if I put in two here, I'm only returning that one value. So what I'm doing is I'm actually leaving the final one blank. I'm not specifying a column. And that means it'll fill in all the columns for the data set. So now if I change this down, let's say I'm only doing the first three months, if I do G to I, and then that third row. Now it's only returning the ones for January, February, and March. So it's going to expand as much as you have specified in the underlying data set. So whatever you have in here is what's going to show. And then over here, we're doing the opposite. We're doing the same thing but now we're doing rows instead of columns. So you can see I left that column one blank here. And this works the same way. If I only want to show a couple of them, I can do it to 12 and you can see it only goes down to 12 now. So that's a quick way to be able to use the index formula to populate multiples, either multiple rows or multiple columns. And so here again, you see I have this salesperson. So again, here we can decide to populate this using a match and match here zero and we're having a error because we haven't selected one yet so let's go ahead and select one liam and now we have that populated in there we test it back to the full data set now we can select this and see the results for january through december for any salesperson we select all right and let's go ahead and do the same thing over here real quickly this should be old hat to you now select march and we're going to select that row of data there, finish it out. And now we can see the data. Let me pull this back to 14. And so January, we have these numbers here. And if we go to December, we can see our 1398 through 1820 there. All right, so that's it for today. Hopefully that helps you to understand some of the great capabilities of the index formula, and I hope it gives you some ideas on how you can use this on your own projects. Thank you very much, and we'll see you again soon.